Evening, everyone. The injuries keep coming. Barry Larkin is now day-to-day -day after aggravating a strained muscle in his rib cage during batting practice today. Junior, unfortunately, he would be week-to-week, -week, out three to six with a partially torn patella tendon in his right knee. Junior's hoping to avoid surgery and get back on the field as soon as possible. When he was on the MRI scanner, that's all he did is kept calling out saying, Doc, did we win or did we lose? Did we win? Who won? How did we win? More concerned about that than his knee. And uh, I think this is a guy who spent some time last year on the DL. I felt that, you know, obviously with him not being in a lineup that made the Reds a, a weaker team last year, he wants to be in there this year. He wants to help contribute early on and uh, help the team stay in contention. Well, with Junior on the DL, Ruben Mateo got the call up and then was scratched from today's starting lineup feeling ill. So Encarnacion went to center as the Reds opened the PNC Park in Pittsburgh this afternoon. Reds get the first scoring chance. Aaron Boone taking former Reds lefty Ron Valone to the gap and Booney trying to stretch this thing into a triple and he will get under the tag, but it's wasted because no one got him in. Elmer DeSens had a super outing. Even got a little defensive help. Gookie Dawkins in for the Ailing Larkin. How about that full layout in front of Encarnacion? Scoreless in the sixth. Giles doubled, then descends balked into third, and it cost Elmer. Ramirez sends this one deep to center. Giles scores. It was the only run the Pirates scored. Problem is, it was one more than the Reds scored. Only got four hits, and Vallone wins the Bucks home opener. One zip. The Strohs double up the Rockies on the scoreboard. Partial tear of the patellar tendon, a partial dislocation of the kneecap. The prognosis is the same for both Junior and the Reds. A month at best, season ending at worst. Ken Griffey Jr. Sunday, much like his stay in Cincinnati so far. First inning homer for some initial excitement. Adversity follows in the form of a seventh inning injury. Mike Greenberg now, and a member of baseball's all-century team that's had no luck since, well, basically the turn of the century. From the Seattle Mariners, center fielder Ken Griffey Jr. There it goes. There's a moon scraper. Back, 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 back. Gone. Well, I'm finally home. The 30-year-old kid traded from Seattle to Cincinnati in February of 2000 was electric, impossible not to watch. And most of all, he was having the time of his life. Just a year later, however, he told Peter Gammons that was no longer the case. I got criticized for, for smiling. He doesn't like the game. He doesn't take the game serious. Then I stopped smiling. Now he, something's wrong. He's mad all the time. He's not happy. You know, there's no win situation for me. The Reds won even less the following season, in large part because of a nagging hamstring that limited Griffey to 111 games. Through the ensuing offseason and a spring training marred by criticism from former teammates, Junior was priming for a return to form. Now that injury has been added to insult, Griffey's quest for a World Series ring is not the only chase being placed on hold. To think that Ken will break Hank Aaron's home run record in a Reds uniform is thrilling. The possibility does still remain, provided Griffey makes a full recovery. When Hank Aaron hit his 755th home run, he was 42 years old. Griffey is only 32. He would need to hit an average of 31 a year to reach 755 by his 42nd birthday. That's more than possible. He's averaged 31 during his two years in Cincinnati. However, by the time Griffey turns 42, 755 may only be enough for third place. Barry Bonds would need to hit 38 homers a year to catch Aaron by the age of 42, while Sosa would need 34 a year to do the same. The likelihood of both staying healthy is questionable, as is the likelihood of both falling short. But either way, it is clear that for Ken Griffey Jr., what has been lost is not only his standing as the game's most feared hitter, but also his status as slugger most likely to succeed. Good evening, everyone. Back in action for the Reds tonight in Pittsburgh as they try to get back to the 500 mark and get their first win without Junior in the lineup. Two outs, two on, top of one. Booney taking one deep the other way. Rios, he's got it. No, he doesn't. Drops it. Taylor and Dunbo score two zip. Encarnacion homered, made it 3-1. Then far from done in a second, Barry Larkin. Back in the lineup, gets a big base knock. Acevedo and Taylor both score. Larkin would lead the game, re-injuring his rib cage. 6-1 Reds. More nice defense here. Oh, this is sweet. Taylor in left, Encarnacion in center. Bad news bears. It would lead to a couple of runs. 
Up 7-5, though, in the eighth. Infield in. Casey rips one to Pokey Reese. He drops it. That's fun, isn't it? He drops the ball. Wilton Guerrero comes home to score. 8-5, and that's the final Reds win. And back to 500. Junior still could get back on the field by May. Doc Kremchek took another look at the partially torn patella tendon. Said the rehab is working. Junior's on schedule to get back in three to six weeks. Dr. James Andrew reviewed the MRI and agrees with the diagnosis. I just hope that people are patient with us. It's uh, some of the things that we hear out there, man, is, oh, my goodness. Uh, so that's funny, but, uh, you know, we're battling, and uh, we'll continue to battle. That outfield gap you saw was the only error the Reds committed last night, but they're averaging more than one a game and ranked 28th out of 30 teams in fielding percentage. Tonight, they were hoping to be the good hands people as they wrapped up a series in Pittsburgh. While Demetri Young is batting 207 for the winless Tigers, the outfielder the Reds got in exchange, Juan Encarnacion is tearing it up. That's his second home run in two games and third of the season. It gave the Reds a 1-0 lead. But in the bottom of the same inning, the Pirates turned that one-run deficit into a one-run lead. Jimmy Haynes hanging an 0-2 curveball. Kevin Young made him pay. A two-run homer, 2-1 two Pirates. But in the next inning, guess who delivered again? Encarnacion, a sharp single that scored Haynes from third and a hustling Barry Larkin from second. 3-2 Reds, Encarnacion now batting 316. That's all Haynes and the Reds needed. He pitched into the seventh inning, struck out six, and picked up the win. Danny Graves earned save number three as the Reds improved to 5-4 and four with a 3-2 win in Pittsburgh. The Reds move on to Philadelphia for a three-game series, but won't have Luis Pineda in the bullpen. He's been suspended three games. Win their second straight for the first time this year and climb above 500 for the second time. Jimmy Haynes with a much better second outing tonight. Scoreless in the fourth, Juan Encarnacion. Juan gone. His third of the year. Reds lead at one zip. Jimmy Haynes made one mistake. Bottom of four. Kevin Young. Uh, gone. Just like that, it's 2-1 Bucks. Top of five. A Barry Larkin double sets up. Encarnacion again. Rip to left. Haynes is in. Here comes Lark. He's coming under the tag. It's 3-2 Reds. Haynes goes six and a third. Six hits. Nice outing. Gabe White a perfect inning in a third. Then Danny Graves in in the ninth. Pokey flies out for the third the save right. for Graves. Two or three from the Bucks. Three two, your final. Tonight, Reds reliever Luis Pineda was hit with a three game suspension for intentionally hitting the Cubs' Todd Hundley April 3rd at Synergy. Pineda could decide to appeal since he contends he wasn't throwing at Hundley. If he doesn't, suspension starts tomorrow.